What's going on guys? In this video we're going to cover two shrinkage methods for linear regression, which is going to be ridge and lasso. What is a shrinkage method? So we already learned one way to boost the accuracy of our linear regression models is through feature selection, where we could use either subset selection, forward selection, or backward selection and find the best set of predictors. So another method we could use when we're given a set of predictors is a shrinkage method. So what a shrinkage method does is in linear regression, our goal was to minimize the sum of squared errors. So with the shrinkage method, our goal is now going to be to minimize the sum of squared error plus some shrinkage penalty. So what this penalty allows us to do is now we can control the flexibility of our model which we couldn't do before when we were just using linear regression. Ridge regression. So the goal of ridge regression is to minimize the formula of the sum of squared error plus lambda times the summation of our coefficient estimates squared. So this lambda is a tuning parameter, which can take any value from zero to infinity. So when lambda is equal to zero, we're just left with the sum of squared error, which would be the same as linear regression. When lambda is equal to infinity, it'll approach the null model. So we can say that as lambda increases, we expect the flexibility of our model to decrease. So our goal as a whole is to minimize this equation. So when we choose smaller values of lambda, we can expect this side of the equation to decrease. But when we choose smaller values of lambda, we already solved the smallest sum of squared error would be to use linear regression. So now when we shrink those coefficient estimates, we can expect the sum of squared error to increase. So these two parts of the equation are at odds with each other. Now this lambda coefficient as it increases, it affects how much the strength is on this side of the equation. So higher values of lambda, we can expect smaller coefficient estimates and higher sum of squares error for our train data. So why would we want to increase the sum of squared error? So the idea is that by adding a little bias, we hope to greatly decrease our variance. So by adding this penalty, which is also called the L2 penalty for ridge regression, we're saying that we can lower the flexibility of our linear regression model in the hopes of decreasing the variance more than we add to the bias. Another way of writing the ridge regression formula would be that we want to minimize our sum of squared error subject to the sum of our coefficient estimates squared being less than some budget constraint, or S. So if we had the linear regression model, which essentially is lambda is equal to zero, and say we have the equation y is equal to 5 plus 4x1 plus 3x2. So we could say that our budget constraint would just be our coefficient estimate squared, or 4 squared plus 3 squared, which would be equal to 25. So it's saying with a budget constraint of 25, the best possible coefficient estimates we could produce is 4 and 3. Now let's say we had a lambda value equal to 3. And let's say the equation it produced is y is equal to 5 plus 3x1 plus 2x2. Now it's saying the best model we can create, or the lowest sum of squared errors we can get, with a budget constraint of now 3 squared plus 2 squared, or 13, is 3 and 2. So with a budget constraint of 13, best model we can choose is 3 and 2. 
Now, as we increase our value of lambda, our budget constraint, or S, is going to decrease. So we're going to have to use closer and closer coefficient estimates to zero. Lasso regression. So lasso regression formula is very similar to ridge regression. Our goal is now going to be to minimize our sum of squared error plus lambda times the summation of the absolute value of our coefficient estimates. So just like ridge regression, our lambda value can take any value from zero to infinity. And when lambda is equal to zero, we're still left with the linear regression model. And as lambda approaches infinity, we'll still be left with the null model. Now, as we decrease or shrink our coefficient estimates towards zero, this side of the equation will decrease. But as we change our coefficient estimates or shrink them, the sum of squared errors will increase. And again, lambda chooses by how much our coefficient estimates decrease. So bigger lambda, lambda, smaller coefficient estimate. So we can use the budget constraint again, and we can say that when lambda is equal to zero for last cell, and say we have the equation y is equal to 5 plus 4x1 plus 3x2. So the budget constraint here would be the absolute values of our 4 plus 3, which would equal to 7. So the best coefficient estimates we can choose with a coefficient and with a budget constraint of 7 would be 4 and 3. Now if we change our lambda, say to 3, and it produced results y is equal to 5 plus 3x1 plus 2x2, then our budget constraint would be 3 plus the absolute value of 2 or 5. So the best possible model we could choose, or lowest sum of squared errors we can choose, would be to choose 3 and 2. And then again, as we increase our lambda, our budget constraint decreases. So we have to use smaller coefficient values. Comparing the two. So let's say we did a linear regression equation of y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2. And let's say we wanted to add a budget constraint that the sum the squared of our coefficient estimates, so beta 1 squared plus beta 2 squared, had to be less than or equal to 25. So this means that beta 1 could equal 5 beta 2 could equal 0, beta 1 could equal 0, beta 2 could equal 5, and then if we wanted to meet somewhere in the middle, we could say that 2 beta 1 squared, or that they're both equal, is equal to 25, which would produce beta 1 is equal to about 3.5, beta 2 is equal to about 3.5. And we could produce infinitely many values. And now if we were to plot these, so let's say this is 5, 0, 0, 5, it would ultimately form a circle like this. So these would be all possible values that we can give our coefficient estimates given that there's a restraint of 25 on ridge regression. Now let's say that if there was no constraint, so we're just using linear regression, this would be our coefficient estimates of beta 1 and beta 2. Now, as we increase our value of lambda, so as lambda increases, our constraint will decrease, which means our sum of squared errors will increase. So these blue circles are going to represent the sum of squared errors. So as they get further and further from our ordinary least squares, the sum of squared errors are increasing. So they'll keep increasing until they hit the point of our constrained value, which would be right about here. So we can say that the best beta 1 and beta 2 coefficient estimates using a restraint of 25 would be our beta 1, and we'll say that's about 
beta 1 equal to, it looks about 2, and beta 2 equal to about 1, we'll call this point. So the point where it hits is the estimates we would choose for our ridge regression, given that they had a restraint, a constraint of 25. Now we can do the same thing for our lasso model. So say we're given the equation y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1x1 1 plus beta 2x2. 2 2. So we want to minimize the sum of squared error. This time we'll use a constraint of 5. So this is saying the absolute value of our beta 1 plus the absolute value of our beta 2 has to be less than or equal to 5. So one possible option would be that our beta 1 is equal to 5 and beta 2 is equal to 0, or we can do that our beta 1 is equal to 0, and our beta 2 is equal to 5. And then we could also meet in the middle, where beta 1 is equal to 2.5, beta 2 is equal to 2.5. So if we were to put this on the plot, all possible combinations that our beta 1 and beta 2 value can take, with the constraint or budget constraint of 5, it would form a square right around the axes. Now again, this is the best fit we have if we were to use ordinary least squares, or the best combination of beta 1 beta 2 to minimize the sum of squared errors with no constraint. But now that we added a constraint, as the lambda value increases, so as lambda increases, we can expect our sum of squared errors to increase. So this will be the increase in our sum of squared errors until it hits the point of our budget constraint parameters to be right about here. So this would be saying that the best combination of beta 1 and beta 2 we can change we can choose with the constraint budget constraint of being less than or equal to 5 would be right about here at beta 2 equal to 5 beta 1 equal to 0. So the lowest sum of squared errors we can achieve with a budget constraint of 5 using lasso regression would be 0, 5. Now, similarities between the two. So both have a tuning parameter lambda, which controls the flexibility of our model. And as lambda increases, our flexibility decreases. Now Ridge uses the L2 penalty, which is going to be lambda times the summation of our beta coefficients squared. Lasso uses the L1 penalty, which is going to be lambda times the summation of the absolute value of our beta coefficient value. Now the advantage of using lasso is that, as we can see from our plot here, the point at which our final model or our coefficient estimates that were chosen based on our budget constraint gave one value of zero. So ultimately with lasso, because it forms this square here instead of a circle, it's possible for it to meet on one of the intercepts, whether that be the x-intercept or y-intercept for two parameters. So what this allows us to do is that lasso can form feature selection. So it can ultimately eliminate predictors from the model altogether. Ridge cannot, no feature selection. So you can think of it as ridge shrinks the coefficient estimates towards zero by a proportional value. And lasso shrinks the coefficient estimates towards zero by a flat amount. The results of using ridge and lasso regression is that you can no longer use t-tests on your coefficient estimates because your coefficient estimates are no longer unbiased. But the interpretation of your model stays the same. So say you had y is equal to beta 0 plus 3x. 
and this was used in ridge regression. Then you can still say with a one unit increase in x, we can expect a three unit increase in y. Okay. So now we can do a quick summary. So with ridge, we minimize the sum of squared errors plus lambda times the summation of our beta parameters squared. So when we increase lambda, our beta coefficients, the summation of our beta coefficients will decrease. Then with lasso, we have the sum of squared errors plus lambda times the summation of the absolute value of our beta coefficients. So as we increase lambda, again, the absolute value of our beta coefficients will decrease. So in either of these cases, both are shrinking the coefficient estimates towards zero. And the reason that we want to shrink our coefficient estimates towards zero is we're going to ultimately add a little bias in the hopes of greatly decreasing the variance. So when we perform either ridge or lasso on our train data, the results will always look worse than linear regression because they are less flexible. However, we're hoping that they'll do better on the test set. And the way we'll be able to test that is we would just use cross-validation. Where we would use different values for lambda, just like if we were using different values of k for k and n. Say we use lambda is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0.01, 0 0.1, cross validation, and whichever one returns the lowest sum of squared error, you would choose as your final tuning parameter value. Okay, so that wraps up this section and it wraps up this chapter. Next section, I'll do a full review on the entire chapter of linear regression in KNN. And that's all I got. Thanks.